you guys. So I'm indoors because it's just so cold. Um, and um, basically, as you saw, I painted the top of this um, LT1000 tractor hood, right? And you can see the difference here. It's a little bit different, obviously, right? Um, this green is not quite like that green, but you know what? It's, it's pretty good. It's close enough. Um, this paint seems like it's a little tacky for some reason. Um, it was cold outside, so maybe the paint didn't really cure, which is why I brought it inside too, you know, so that the heat could kind of cure it a little bit. Either way, it looks better than before for sure. Um, so now I'm going to try to, as you can see what I did here, that's the line, right? And you can see the, the difference in color, right? I mean, it's slightly different, you know? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to fix this, um, this hole here. There's a view from the top, right? So it's kind of an irregular shape of what I need to fill. So what I've decided I'm going to try to do is I've got my daughter's craft glue gun <laughs> for her projects, right? I've actually used it before. Works pretty good on a deck, um, on a uh, hood for plastics. And it's got some uh, duct tape there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take duct tape and place like a, a piece just to cover up the hole from the inside to give it like a platform where the glue could go. You know, almost like a layer. It's going to mesh. The glue is going to mesh onto the... Uh, duct tape and create like a plastic barrier so the tape is just there as a as a guide to where the plastic is going to sit you know and it's going to mesh along with the hole to fill the hole because this ditch is not so deep I'm just going to fill it with plastic from the glue gun I'm going to let the glue gun warm up and put the tape in the back so I've got the duct tape on the inside now. And I'm just gonna fill it with some glue. So how a glue gun works is you plug it in, right, to your outlet, and it has a heating element at the tip. You shove these solid plastic sticks inside, and every time you trigger it, it pulls the stick to the front where it heats up and it shoots out. As you can see this ditch here, I'm sorry I'm moving around so much but I'm trying to use one hand to glue and one hand to hold the camera. I wanted you all to see it close up which is why I don't have a tripod. Because when I have the tripod on it's too far away and then if I close up on it the video gets grainy and it doesn't look as good and it's all about how it looks so you see what I'm saying I just sealed up this hole with this liquid plastic here see so that's a little start here's a tough part here where I have to slowly go around the edges here where the tractor um hood meets the duct tape and it's not coming out now so I don't know why alright so you gotta kinda push this for it to come out working as good as it normally does. I'm going to put you on time lapse instead.
So I had to move it upright in an angle where the blob wouldn't start dripping down, you know? So as you can see, I overdid it because you want it to pop out so you can sand it down or grind it, you know what I mean? You would have to wait until this thing fully dries. I don't know if this will work, but... Because um, right now it's all very soft, you know, like if you touch it and stuff, it's very soft. But I, I over blobbed it so that it's higher than what it is. Then when it fully cures, you can kind of grind it slowly to try to smooth it out. So it's all plastic, you know. Um, I'll see how it goes. I've never filled this much before with the glue gun. I actually use like three sticks. So uh, I'm going to let it cure overnight and see what happens. Good morning. It's the next day and I'm back outside in my garage. The tackiness of this uh, part here is done. So that looks okay. I'm just going to keep it the way it is. Uh, so look, this is the glue gun, the remnants of the glue gun, okay? So now it's hard, like plastic. But what I'm worried about is that it that probably isn't hot enough. You know, the glue gun, it probably wasn't hot enough to adhere to the plastic. You know what I mean? So I've got my uh, grinder here. And I was just going to go over it slowly, you know, lightly, to just sand down the protruding parts that pop up. You know, because you, you always want to have it m more plastic over the, you know, hole so that uh, when you grind it, it'll be level, right? If you don't put enough plastic, it'll be a ditch, you know what I mean? And you will see it. So I have a feeling that if I just go over this thing, this whole blob may just come off. Maybe. Depends on how fast the speed is on this disc, you know what I mean? So I'm just going to kind of play with it for a second. So, so bear with me, alright? It may take a while. kind of work out, right, it's, it's now, you know, um, I mean, it didn't completely get out of there, you know, that's, that's a little piece of it right there, I'm going to do this part here, got to get a better angle though for you guys, I, I got to be like right here, so I have a better angle,
actually came out all right. I mean, you know, considering. I'm gonna get some sandpaper. Actually, I think I'm, I'm gonna try a file first, just to get the bigger parts off, you know? Henry, you're going through a lot of trouble for just a, just a hole. It's only a hood. Yeah, but you know, you kind of want to see if you could, you know, get it to almost, you know, perfect. Not perfect, but you know, you want to see what you could do with different um, techniques on how to get things the way you want it, you know? This way, if you try this, next time you'll know that this works better than another technique, right? So you want to try different things. Wasting a lot of time doing stupid stuff. It's not stupid. You want to get it right, right? Yeah, so you see, this is the thing about um, glue guns is that it doesn't adhere so well to the um, plastic. You know, the heat is not strong enough, you know, to bond along with the base plastic. Ah, it's better than the hole before, right? I'm not going to go crazy. You get the picture, I'm going to work on this bit. Got one of these sanding sponges. I don't know what they call these things, but it's a sponge and it sands, so sanding sponge. Good grip, you know, you can get you can get good angle on this grip. Just smooth it out. It's not gonna be perfect of course, but you know what? I'm just I'm just trying the glue gun technique. It's okay. I was gonna just put like a thick, <laughs> a thick uh, clear tape over it, you know, the thick plastic kind. But uh, you know that has flex, you know. So if I paint it over it, you touch it, it's gonna crack the paint, you know. I gotta see if I have any primer too, because I don't know if I have any primer. You definitely have to primer this just to give it like a layer of uh, thicker paint, you know? I'm surprised that this whole block hasn't flown off yet because that's my experience with glue guns is you make the layers, uh, the, the blob of glue too, uh, too big of a block, right? It won't adhere to the base plastic, so any kind of um, force to it will just make the whole thing come right off, you know? So I'm surprised that this is actually holding up, you know, which is very good. Definitely don't want to screw it up, you know, because I don't want to do this crap all over again, you know. So that's taken off a good layer there, and you take some fine sandpaper. It's hard to do without a block, you know. Curl it around your finger or something. I was thinking about taking a blowtorch to this to make it so, um, smoother and softer, but I don't want to heat it up so much that it'll dip down and I have to redo it again, you know? I think that's just about good enough. I'm going to primer it now. Good enough. Blew all the remnants and dust away, right? Because this is part of this front module, right? The nose, the whole thing is one piece. I've seen, you've proven, we've proven that this, uh, this green paint is not an exact match to this. 
So if you just sprayed this part right here, you're going to see a difference. So therefore you have to mask off this entire nose and paint this entire nose. Masking it off is very easy. Just use some of that masking tape. Ideally you want the rubbery kind so it flexes for curves and stuff. But if you don't have it, that's all you do. Mask it off there. Lift one end of it. Pull up half of it, you know, so you can take newspaper and cover everything on this side. Then after you mask off that part there, just take like a big, uh, I don't know, drop cloth or towel or something like that just to cover it up, you know. I'm going to find some primer. Found like this uh, old can of uh, scratch filler and primer. I'm just going to try this. It's uh, red or orange, but this, this green is dark enough to cover, up, cover that up. Hopefully. Jesus. Oh man, the nozzle is frozen. Don't you hate that? Oh. Terrible. I'm gonna wipe that crap off. for the paint to dry and then uh, I made a deal with this other guy on Craigslist he had a he had a tractor seat that he was selling for forty dollars and so uh, I asked him if he wanted to trade and he says no he didn't want to trade but then uh, you know we worked out a deal where I would give him eight quarts of Lucas oil 530 and he would give me the seat so I'm over uh, going heading over to uh, Bohemia now and um, I'm gonna go do a trade with him to get that tractor seat for my Murray Select. That way I don't have to rip apart the other Murray that I got from Mondo Mowers. Um, as I'm leaving my house to head to the highway, I see this on the side of the This is the... Uh 400 or 500 E because it has a primer bulb. The, e, the EXs are the 550 or the 450 EXs that don't have a primer bulb, so it's not an auto choke. It's your typical MTD with a Briggs single cylinder engine on a push mower. Um, it's pretty good. Looks like it's all there. Put in my van. Hey hey! I know, what do I want that for, right? It's free! It's free! Over here at the guy's house, and we're getting ready to do that trade for the seat and the, uh, and the oil. And I come upon this. This looks like an MTD, right? It has the same front uh, nose as my Rodimus Prime. Same hood. Very cool. Look at these knobby tires on that. And look, you got the battery over here. You got side view mirrors. Got like a chopper steering wheel. Got the high back seat over here. It's got a ball hitch. Oh wow, look at that. It's got a it's got a hand winch. I guess the light switch is there. Tom, is it okay if I look at the engine?
Very cool. Uh, that's a Tecumseh, right? 13.5 um, or something? So, yeah. I got a big, big backyard with like almost three acres. Right? Three acres? Yeah, Good big. Lord, I want to know what you mow with it. You, yeah. you use this to mow for yeah. the three acres? Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm only cleared about an acre. Everyone else is pretty clear, but I'm not. So uh, Tom says that this actually has the mowing deck for it. He has a plow for the winter, and basically the the winch that he uses here lifts and lowers the, uh, the, the, the plow. I was telling him that this Tecumseh motor um, you really should have a yeah. <laughs> engine shroud over it because it'll it'll uh, overheat prematurely. And he says he has three um, acres. So wow, if you mow three acres, man, and it doesn't overheat, then those engines are built pretty well, you know. Uh, he has this seat over here that is permanently on there, so that's why he rerouted the battery to the front over there. Because if he had the battery where it's supposed to be, he wouldn't be able to change the battery in a couple of years. You know, he'd have to take this whole thing apart. So it's very very cool, huh? So I'm in Tom's garage and I asked him if I could videotape this because this is this is like something right out of like American Pickers, you know what I mean? Look at the look at the mechanic boxes that he has over here. I mean, it's like lined up against the wall. I mean, how much tools can you have, right Tom? Uh, you can never have <laughs> he says you can never have enough tools. Look at his uh, miniature car collection. Is this is this out of control? I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a collection this massive. And there's some superhero stuff. Oh, are you a Star Wars? Are you a Star Wars guy? Yeah. How can you not be? I'm yeah. a Star Wars guy. I, I remember waiting online in 1977 to watch Star Wars with my uh, brother. And uh, ever since then, my brother and I get together and we watch, we watch it on the first day it's released, you know? Of course, the new stuff is kind of garbage, isn't it? The, the Disney stuff. Did you see the latest one? No. Oh, you see? <laughs> that tells you something right there, right? Man, look at these cars. They're fantastic. Now, uh, do, you, do you dust them often? Because I gather... Once a year. Oh, once yeah, a year? Is that right? Yeah. That's absolutely fantastic. Outstanding. So it's really cool how you just, you know, meet other guys that, you know, like to wrench, you know? So normally I would just give him what he needed and I'd be on my way. But to see that... I had to show you guys that garage, man. How about that collection, huh? Crazy, right? Uh, and that tractor that he had, you know? You just know, never know who you're going to meet and what kind of stuff people have on a daily basis just going out and getting this uh, seat, you know? So the seat's in good shape. It came off of that MTD, right? It's a short back, of course, which I don't really like, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. It actually comes with the bracket as well as this. So even if uh, this seat doesn't fit on my Murray, which I don't think will fit on the Murray, right? I can at least adapt the bracket to fit. You know what I mean? Uh, at least it has this, so I could, it could, you know, it could stay on there well. So uh, today, just coming to get this, I didn't spend any money, which is my philosophy, right? I used oil to trade, right, uh, to get this. So no cash out of my pocket, right? And at the same time, I find a mower on the way. So scores. So I'm back. A little tacky still, but I'll be careful. I'm gonna install this uh, the light bulbs and um, the lenses. And you know what? Still looks yucky, but way better than before. You know what I mean? And uh, this green kind of matches too. You know, I think it's tacky. Usually this is dry by now, you know, but because it's the winter time and it's cold, the paint is having a difficult time to cure. You know. So I don't know if I should mess with it because if I uh, mess with it right now, I might have a fingerprint or something on there. And I'll try to do it without touching anything. So I shined up the light bulbs. The light bulbs are all dirty and dusty and stuff. Uh, as long as I push it in, turn, it's in there. See, I just put my hand there and it's kind of like tacky, you know? Henry, you should just wait until it dries. Yeah, I know. Oh, God, why do I always do these things? You got to put this reflective thing in there first, otherwise the bulbs won't fit. So this, this reflective thing, even though it's not that reflective anymore over the years, you know, the, the chrome reflective stuff has, you know, deteriorated over the many decades that this thing was here. 
Also clean the lens here. It's full of algae and water and dust and crap. It has two tabs on the side that just slide in. And it has two tabs on the top that clip. Shut up and leave me alone. Jesus Christ. It's gonna crack it. Maybe. Don't dang it. Hey! What's up? How are you doing? Sorry. A uh, neighbor has a golden doodle dog all the time, and so whenever she comes around with her dog, they have to go and play together. So I have to take Bo before a walk with his girlfriend. <laughs> Because when a car passes by, he dives for the car. I mean, do they want to die? You know, it's weird. All right, so that looks pretty good, actually. Um, you know, because the top is going to mesh with the color over right here. See what I'm saying? That looks all right. Huh? I mean, yeah, way better than before, right? So that'll be good enough, you know. The tractor is not, you know, really a fantastic, you know, quality tractor, but um, it definitely looks better now. Um, about 10 more minutes until the Daytona 500 starts, so I'm going to rush over there and put this on. As you saw in time lapse, um, since I was back here painting something, I figured I'd paint the Poulon Pro, you know what I mean? So now it uh, looks better. This Poulon Pro, while it looks pretty good, if you get close, you'll see that it's not really that great of a paint job. But And uh, neither is this. But I used up a can and a half of quick color to uh, paint the decks and the side where you, you could see rust and everything. Uh, and while it's definitely not perfect, it at least covers up the rust, you know, so it looks a little bit better. So now I'm going to install the hood onto this thing. And uh, these two would be good to go. Match up the two brackets into those two slits. Goes right in there. There we go. Connect the lights. Easy. Alright. You guys remember what this thing looked like before, right? Big hole over here. While it's not, you know, super smooth or anything like that, it's a glue gun, you know. Uh, I wanted to see if I could do it with the glue gun. It's the first time I really used a glue gun to fill that much material into the, uh, you know, the bulk of the frame here for the grill. But uh, this was all rusted out, had a hole here, so now it's painted at least to uh, look decent, you know. Decent! Yeah, it's okay. Didn't really cost anything, you know what I mean? Pretty cool. Anyway, thanks a lot for uh, following me along my uh, daily vlog. This is uh, what I did today. Uh, I'm going to go inside and watch the Daytona 500. I wasn't really a NASCAR guy very much. I'm more of an Indy car guy. But, uh, you know, it's motorsports. Love motorsports. I'll see you fellas next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey guys, support my channel via sticker. Also, follow me on Instagram at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website, MowersBlowers.com. See you guys on the next one. Have a great day. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.